Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Friday, May the 15th. Uh, I'm coming to you from my home in northern Boone County and on the phone I have Dr. Anand Chakolingam, my good friend. And you're in Columbia right now at home, correct, uh, doctor? Hi, Paul. Pleasure to be with you again on the phone. Thanks so much uh, for inviting me to your program. I'm working oh, from the VA hospital right now, trying to take oh, all safety precautions. Right yes. Yeah. Now, of course, you are a, uh, a cardiologist, a heart doctor, and you have a a special program that you're trying to start right now in conjunction with the coronavirus. You want to tell us about that? Sure. I've been here in Colombia since 2006 as a cardiologist, both at the university and the VA. But in the last five years at the VA hospital, primarily for veterans with heart disease, we have developed a program called Heartful Living. It is a self-awareness-based group clinic, which is a novel concept to try and encourage people to do a little bit more of self-inquiry understand their own intrinsic motivations and uh, challenges and fears, and that way they can face it and overcome it in their own terms. The reason, as a cardiologist, I'm doing this is because I feel this is the best available tool for us to sustain the changes that we are trying to do. It's not good enough if somebody quits smoking for three months, eats healthy for six months. We want them to transform their life, and feel the ownership and confidence that comes from it. So that's the basis of the program we have at our VA for the last five years. Now, with the coronavirus, we have uh, stopped all routine operations. So we only take care of emergencies and uh, people who really need our attention, either from the COVID challenge itself or some other uh, health issues. What you're trying to do is getting people to do a complete lifestyle change. Is that correct? Exactly. As a cardiologist, I am trying to inspire them to make that change through their own deeper self-understanding. So let me tell you what we are trying to do now with the coronavirus. We call this the SOS program. SOS program? Yeah. Self-talk, observation, and silence. So self-talk has been around since the time man started talking. But uh, most of the talk, obviously, is to communicate to somebody else. But this talking to oneself has got a lot of very interesting uh, connotations. The best one that I would quote here is from motivational uh, self-talk, which has been around for uh, athletes to do well in challenging uh, endurance uh, efforts. Same thing we believe can be used as a tool of mindfulness to sort of uh, trace the thoughts as they appear. There are three things, broadly speaking. One is negative thoughts. The other is positive motivational thoughts. And the third thing would be very neutral things. So whatever the basis for the thought, if we are able to talk loudly, and hear ourselves. The observation part is the most important thing. So if somebody can sit alone in his room and talk for, say, two minutes and observe his thoughts, whether they are positive, neutral, uh, motivational, either way, and uh, that observation is done by the same person who is doing the talking. So there are two people inside our own mind, one doing the talking, one sitting and observing. So recognizing that there are... uh, Two aspects to our own consciousness is the first step. And then recognizing the deeper seat of consciousness as the observer of the conscious logical thoughts. That is the other aspect. And if you do this for two minutes, then I would recommend two or three times longer, which is five to ten minutes of silently sitting down and letting that silence be another area that we can consciously observe and then get back to doing your routine stuff. So this is a so very, very simple thing. Yeah, yeah you're, talking, you're, you're talking to yourself and you're listening to yourself. Exactly. And then the, the second S is what? Self-talk, observation, and silence. So silence is the last part. And silence is just sitting quietly 
doing nothing and clearing you. Basically, how how I would look at it is first two minutes of talking aloud so that the mind, whatever is there, sort of gets emptied. And then the observer moves towards sitting in silence for a few more minutes. And then getting up and going on with their routine day-to-day activities. So altogether, we are talking about only 10 minutes. First two minutes of talking to yourself and then a few minutes of silence and then getting back to your routine. And this is going to help our heart, correct? I strongly believe it will help us get a little deeper into understanding the ways that the mind works. Once we recognize how our mind is working and what is stressing us, that itself will be easily helping us cope with the stress and challenge. And three times more effective will be the silence that makes us more creative and intuitive. If you look at the coronavirus pandemic or any health challenge or societal issue, younger people and children especially are so much more capable of coping. That is because they have so much more imaginative and intuitive capacity, which uh, as we age, we lose, unfortunately. So my simple tool of SOS, self-observing, self-talk, observation, and silence will be a way to connect with our intuitiveness and resilience, which is inherent in all of us. That way we can cope with the 100 challenges that are facing us right now and the other 100 that we don't yet know that we're going to have to face over the next months and years ahead. You know, Doctor, just listening to you talk puts me in a very relaxed mood. And I keep thinking of what you said the very first time I met you, how important it is to smile. What, smile 500 times in an hour, right, or more? 20 times an hour, which is three. What? Every every three minutes we have to ma- make a conscious effort to smile. So if you practice okay, this doctor. SOS, I don't even think you will need to worry about smiling because a smile will naturally happen. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And it's always, always a pleasure to visit with you. And I'm smiling right now, even though you're not here, you're on the phone about 30 or 40 miles away from here. I hope you have a good day. And if people want more information, where can they go? Real quick, we're just about out of time. Yeah, Anand Chokalingam, they can Google up uh, at the university website, and at the VA, I'm available. Uh, Good luck and uh, take care, stay safe. And uh, this is going to pass. And uh, we are going to get back to our best form of uh, living I very believe soon. That. Good luck. Thank you for visiting with us, Doctor. Thanks so much for having me, Paul.